What's better than a ooey gooey hot cinnamon roll? Not much, but folks, I got you. I got you covered on this one. I do. We're going to show you how to make that perfect cinnamon roll. Whoo, what a great icing. And guess what? We're going sourdough, but hang on. It's not complicated. We're going to show you how to do this. It is so easy. All the tips and tricks of cooking in a Dutch oven. Come on. I'm going to go to rolling out the dough. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the backyard. And oh, if you're a first time viewer, you're just now finding this channel, welcome. Come on here and let me give you a big old hug. And for all of our regular viewers who be waiting for these videos on Wednesday, hey, we just so proud to have each and every one of you. Sourdough cinnamon roll. Make you want to get that roll, it does. And folks, sourdough is something that can be a little bit complicated, but we're going to show you how this is so easy. And everything that we be using, the products, the recipe, everything, will be listed right down there below in the little link where you can find it. But hey, did you know that in our first book, A Taste of Cowboy, there is a lot of great recipes that got sourdough in it. And look here, sourdough cinnamon roll. Whew, it is in there. Quick start is what I call it because it's not traditional. It's not getting them spores from the air traveling down through here scientifically. Nature joining with the atoms and the molecules as it reaches into the crock jar and Whoa. makes. Yeah, that's pretty scientific. It is. But how do we do it? Hey, it's pretty simple. It is four cups of warm water. Then just a package of dry yeast, put her in there. But what kickstarts yeast as good as anything in the world? Like it. <laughs> no, hi. I'm talking about sugar. You put that sugar in there combined with the yeast, and it's going to make the yeast active faster. Four cups of all purpose flour. Russet potato. Yep, peel her up, chunk her in there. Folks, you can use this quick start. It is ready to go 24 hours. And then, hey, if you don't want to make no more for a week, dump it out. But if you want to keep it going, that's fine. Just stir it every day. Now, the first time you make it, it's going to bubble up to the top and rise, and you're going to think, ooh, that didn't look like his when he pulled it out of there. Stir it down till it's smooth. Be about the consistency of pancake batter, and then it's ready to go. First thing we're going to do, three cups of this starter right in the mixing bowl. Now, folks, when you take three out of there, and you're going to keep this starter to going, to recharge, you would use a cup and a half of warm water, a cup and a half flour, and about a tablespoon and a half of sugar. Now, seeing as how this is what we call the quick set method, we're going to add some yeast again to it because I want to get that pop. So we're going to add about that much. And remember, what makes yeast more active? You, third row by the pecan tree back there at the pumpkin patch. What? Yes, sugar it is. So glad to have you here with us today. Just pull up a chair and make yourself at home, but don't make no rackets. You'll get in trouble. So we're going to add about a third of a cup of sugar, and we're going to get the sugar and the yeast all incorporated, and we're going to let it set for two or three minutes and just let it work. Now, this recipe that comes out of the book, Taste of Cowboy, does not call for any baking powder. It does not. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you're living at a high altitude above 3,000 or more, Folks, you need to add a little to it. But also, if you're in some really humid country, because altitude and humidity, they affect the way dough rises in anything. So we're going to go ahead, because it is humid here in southwest Oklahoma this morning. It is. And we're going to add a little shake, which is probably about two teaspoons right there it is. It is a third of a cup of vegetable oil. Now to that... I need you to get your flour canister and get it over here handy because we're going to use about three to four cups of flour and then some more for sprinkling. This is not a biscuit. Remember, this is a roll, so we're going to be a little more tougher on that dough. A little more tougher? Is that a word, Shannon? A little more tougher. A little more tougher. So let me find a measuring cup because <laughs> they have all disappeared. Hang on. One more thing, folks, about a teaspoon of salt, which is that much. Give it a little stir. And I just got through washing one of them deals we called a measuring cup. There it is. So you can sift it in there, sprinkle it in there, whatever you want to do. Now I was telling you three to four cups. 
So we always start out with the least amount of that. We can add more flour to it, do we need it? So just keep folding it around there to where you can get all that incorporated and then we're fixing to put our hands on it, folks. We are, in fact. Give yourself a little sprinkle and let's just go to rolling it over here to where we can eventually get it out of there in a minute. You can see that it's got a little stick to it but not bad. Now we're gonna add some flour to this and we're gonna need it a minute. So let me get a cutting board and we will go to town. Where's the cutting board? It's somewhere where I don't know. Give yourself a little sprinkle. I want you just to flatten that out. Get you a little flour, sprinkle back over, roll it back up here again, give it a little mashing. We ain't gonna go long. I just wanna toughen it up just a tad. Make sure that you got that flyer on there, folks, because when we roll this out, I don't want it sticking nowhere. We also have a tool named a husband trainer or rolling pin, but it is not on this table. It's on this other table. <laughs> little sprinkle right there. Just go to rolling. Give it a little mash and just roll. And just keep rolling, folks, till you get it right. And you can see how it sort of stretches back to you. And when I get it there, we're going to just show you the thickness. That is the correct thickness, Which Shannon. Which is what? Right there. That is 5 sixteenths, exactly. Maybe 0 0.93764 millibars off the kilowatt scale. That ever popular ingredient that everybody likes. No, it's not coffee. What is it? Ever popular butter it is. Now you can brush it on there. I like to pour it and then just rub it all the way around. There's just something about sourdough and butter. Look at that shine. I mean, that's better than real cream on a flat top haircut right there. That stuff will stand up and look good. Got a gloss on it. Look like we done lacquered it, it does. We're gonna add some cinnamon and some sugar. Now, give it a sprinkle. Make sure everybody got some of the love on it. When we get this rolled up, I'd like for you to go ahead and preheat that oven to 350 degrees. One thing you have to be careful with when you're using pecans is when you go to rolling this up, you don't want to punch your, your dough. It's like a flat tire. So be careful when you're rolling. If you want to use walnuts, anything you want to throw in there, that's fine. But one thing you'll never find in mine, come on in here and I'll tell you what that is, a raisin. Ooh. No, I will not put a raisin in a cinnamon roll. When you're rolling this, the tighter the roll, the more rise you're going to get out of that cinnamon roll. So just crimp and roll, crimp and roll. We have greased us lightly, a 12 inch Dutch oven, but we had that leftover butter and it needs to go in there. Now folks, I really like to cut these with my hash knife that we make and you can just rock it right through there and go. I'll be on a ranch sometime and, and I like all them crews, but I'll find a bunch that I think is like top of the line, bestest folks ever in the whole world and I'll break out some sourdough cinnamon rolls one morning for breakfast, and they be thinking now that we're gonna have them every morning. If they got leftovers, what do they do? Stick them in a pocket, take them with them, because it's a hard day out there horseback all day and you need a lot of energy, so hey, cinnamon roll is good to go. <laughs> Looky there, the boat is loaded. Everybody has found a home in there. Now folks, we're gonna let these rise 45 minutes to an hour in a warm spot. I want them just to take their time and rise because that's gonna help them be light and fluffy, not too quick and the things get really tough there. And sourdough is very unforgiving in one way. A lot of times it'll rise so far and folks, if you ain't ready and ain't paying attention, that stuff will fall and they'll get hard as a rock and you can kill four squirrels with one of them. Now, if you ain't got a hankering for something sweet Ooh, Shan come up with this recipe some time back. You know that green chili chipotle relish that we make? Instead of using butter, just lay that stuff all out there on it. Smear it around really good. Add you any kind of meat you want. Bacon, ham, and anything. Cream cheese. And yes, and some cream cheese. And then just roll it up and cut it like this. Folks, you have done made yourself a full meal deal right here. So we had us some hardwood lump going there. And hey, some of y'all tell me you ain't got no Bertha. Well, you seen that there wash tub over? It works just as well to start you some coals in. I've used wheelbarrows, half a 55 gallon drum. So hey, don't let that hold you back. You ain't got no Bertha. Then we used a tall trivet. We sort of laid as a light ring around the outside edge and about a medium on top there to cover them up. Now, remember there is butter, 
and cinnamon and sugar in there and that stuff's going to try to caramelize that stuff can burn really easy it can so got a little breeze we're going to have to rotate the lid one way the bottom the other to even out any hot spots that we got and folks you may have to rake them coals back away from there and as them cinnamon rolls are cooking and they've rose that much they're going to get pretty close to that lid so that top heat probably gonna have to come off after a bit so you keep an eye on me and i'll keep an eye on it cast iron and the cooking method is going to show you when that bottom is near done and i'll point that out to you here in a minute when we take that lid off to check it Well, we've been on about probably nearly 10 minutes, folks, and we've rotated twice. So let me take this off there. I got something I want to show you. You can see how that stuff has really begun to brown up there. And when you give it a little mash, it's beginning to set up pretty good on the very outside edge. And uh, that's what we're after. But a cinnamon roll can be raw in the middle. So we're going to take that heat off the top of it. We're gonna spread them coals back even a little further and just let it keep right on cooking. I got two bites over here that I pulled out of one of them that don't have no nuts in them. Ducker, come on. There's one over here, and Big says, yeah, it's pretty good. You're not going to come get a bite? I mean, you just woke up from a nap. It's a little hot today, so now comes what I've been wanting, and I ain't had one of these in about a year. Mm -hmm. mm. That'll make you do the roll up and do the little roll over here, a little roll over here. Woo. Mm. You get that tang of that sourdough, you know, that you're just craving. But then you combine that with that sweetness that we made with the sugar and the butter and the cinnamon. And then the icing we did put on there, folks, all it was was powdered sugar, a little milk, and some almond extract. So how did I know when these done? Hey, cause cast iron will tell you when it is. First of all, you're going to begin to see the top brown. Hey, it's easy as you can be. The lid comes off, you can see it. But then you feel and you get that sort of springiness touch and you want it to spring back. But then you take that fork and you can see that separation all the way around. Cause baked goods and cast iron will do that. They'll pull ever so slightly from the outside edge. And that is the good method that cast is trying to tell you, hey, the bottom near done it is. It takes three things, practice, practice, mold, practice. Always start out with less heat than what you think you're gonna need. Because you've seen me, we can add or take away. And remember, rotate, because that's how you can even out a hot spot all the way around. But guess what? If you burn it on the bottom, and I have, when ain't nobody looking, you just take a bread knife and cut that part off and say, looky, here what I done done. It is a great day above the grass, it is. Like an old man told me on a ranch, anybody can fry meat and boil coffee. But when you can bake consistently in a Dutch oven, then I'm gonna call you a cook. Well, folks, I'm calling y'all a cook because I got great faith in you cooking these. I tip my hat to all our service men and women and veterans who have kept that old flag flying on our countryside there and keeping us safe. But to all the first responders, the folks who take care of us all, and remember, folks, we're going through some crazy times out there, and this is always a channel where you can come in, bring the family, put your feet up, and relax because we want you to feel like our family when you watch. God bless you, each and every one, and we'll see you down the sourdough cinnamon roll trail. That's a big old chunk right there. Hang on. You got a lot of stuff going on and fluffy.